Hi, this is Brad Linder with Download Squad, and today we're going to take a first look at the Asus EEE PC. But wait, this is a software site. What are you guys doing looking at a piece of hardware like a miniature laptop? Well, it turns out that because this is such an innovative uh, miniature laptop running a custom version of Linux, the interface itself is really, really quite interesting. Whether you've used Windows in the past, whether you've used Linux in the past, it's designed to be easy to use for people who really don't know a lot about computers or people who do. And also, it makes it easy to use a small device. Uh, this is a really small device. Let's take a look here. That's a mouse hanging out on the keyboard. It covers up most of the keyboard. The screen itself is only about 7 inches wide. Uh, it's 800 by 480 pixels. And so that means that a lot of applications might not look great because they're going to be cropped a little bit. Certain websites aren't going to look great. But overall, this device makes pretty good use of that screen space and also makes it pretty easy to have such a small laptop. The keyboard itself is small, but not untouched typable. Once you get used to it, you start to think that all other keyboards are really, really large. I find it's easiest to use six fingers as opposed to, you know, a full eight or 10 or, you know, 12 if you have a couple of extras. The trackpad itself is also pretty small, so I like to use a mouse with it. Since the mouse I have right now is so large, I am thinking about getting a smaller travel mouse, because really a large part of the appeal of this $400 laptop is that it's uh, small, lightweight, it's only about two pounds, it has a very small charger that looks more like a cell phone charger than a laptop brick, and uh, so you can put it in your bag, carry it with you anywhere you go, and have a computer, a full-fledged computer. So uh, let's take a look. First thing I'm going to do is boot it up, and you'll notice that it boots very quickly. So there we are, less than 30 seconds. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, plug a mouse in just to show you A, that there's pretty good hardware support because it automatically detects my mouse, and B, to make it a little bit easier to uh, navigate. So one of the first things that you'll notice here is that rather than the typical start menu where you launch programs, you have a series of tabs labeled Internet, Work, Learn, Play, settings, and favorites. And so let's take a look at those one at a time. Under internet, what you get is a combination of desktop applications for accessing the internet, like the Firefox web browser, which is just labeled web, or Pigeon Instant Messenger, which lets you connect to AOL, ICQ, MSN, Yahoo Messenger, and other applications. There's also Skype. And web-based services like Google Docs and Spreadsheets, which actually just launches in Firefox or Wikipedia. Uh, for example, if you click on webmail, you get links to Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, and AOL, which will actually just load in the Firefox internet browser. So let's show you the Firefox internet browser. And you see I've already customized it a little bit here, so it's loading up three different uh, start pages. So let's close a few of those. And go to Download Squad. There you go. Loads pretty quickly. It's a full-fledged web browser. You can do all sorts of things with it that you can do with web browsers. Um, so you'll notice here that you do have to scroll a little bit from side to side if you want to see the whole screen. Our site is actually fairly well optimized to display in small screens while others might not uh, work quite as well. Um, one thing that you'll notice though is that the uh, vertical space is really not that great. So F11 becomes your friend. And in fact, I installed the fuller screen Firefox add-on, which makes it even more F11-y. Uh, if you want to get the, uh, task, the, the toolbars at the top, you just mouse over up here and you can do your back and forth and home and so forth. So un F11 here and close Firefox. And you'll notice that the minimize, maximize, and close boxes look a lot like uh, what you're used to seeing on Windows applications. So it's, it's very familiar feeling. Setting up a wireless network is incredibly easy. You just click wireless networks and up pops a screen that should show you the available networks and you can click connect. And if you want to manage your networks, you can uh, 
click here in the uh, taskbar and see them again here or here. You have your local area connection and your wireless net connection, and you can uh, even set it to auto connect every time you log in. So that works pretty well. So let's take a look at the work tab. And under work, you've got accessories, documents, spreadsheets, presentations, PDF reader, mail, file manager, dictionary, and notes. Uh, the documents, spreadsheets, and presentations are all actually openoffice.org. So you hit any of those and it'll open open office, which loads pretty quickly. And there you have a full-fledged spreadsheet. Under accessories, you've got a calculator, PIM, and screen capture utility. Uh, the personal information manager is contact, which is the default personal information manager for the KDE application suite uh, and desktop uh, suite for Linux. And um, this entire interface is actually based on KDE. So you'll see uh, KDE applications sort of popping up here and there. Uh, but it is a stripped down version of KDE. And when ASUS first announced the, uh, the EEE PC, they said that there'd be an easy mode and a more advanced mode. Uh, as it turns out, when you, when you buy this, you only have access to the easy mode. There are some tricks for getting more advanced applications, and we're going to address those in part two of our, of our series here. But out of the box, you don't have access to those. And it's possible that through some sort of a software update, uh, ASUS may put some more advanced features in, but uh, right now, what you see is what you get. Under Learn, you have Science, Language, Math, Paint, Web Learn. Uh, let's take a look at Paint, for example, here. You've got a little uh, painting application. Or Tux Paint, which is a little more uh, kid-oriented. And then under play, there's games, media player, music manager, photo manager, video manager, webcam, and sound recorder. Uh, the media player plays videos, music manager opens uh, Amarok, and uh, so you can manage videos, photos, etc. Uh, the games, nothing too exciting here. You've got Solitaire, uh, Penguin Racer, Sudoku, uh, Eltrace, which is a Tetris clone. But just to show you the capabilities of this computer, let's take a look at Penguin Racer. You can see it's actually a 3D game here that runs pretty smoothly. Under settings, you've got antivirus, volume, instant shutdown, which brings up the same menu task manager, standby, restart, and shutdown that you would get if you hit the power button. Uh, printers, system info, date and time, personalization, add remove software, disk utility, etc. So there's a couple of things I want to show you here. Uh, first up is the add remove software, which is not nearly as exciting as it sounds because again, you're sort of in a closed environment here when you use the uh, default easy mode. Um, and there's not a ton of applications that you can install. Under internet, for example, right now, there's an update to Skype. There's an update to the dictionary and a BIOS update available. And that's it. That's, that's all you have access to right now, despite the fact that there are thousands of open source applications that could run on the EEE PC. The other thing I want to show you is under the disk utility, you'll see that you have a 3,773 megabyte storage capacity but 62% of that is actually used up right off the bat. When you open the, the unit and turn it on for the first time, you're eating up more than two gigs of memory. And you only have about 1.3, 1.4 available. Now, the reason for that is that there's a, a, the operating system is, is stored in there, obviously. But if you think about it, Asus had planned to make multiple versions of this PC available. This is the four gigabyte model, which is standard right now. But there's also going to be an 8 gigabyte model and a 2 gigabyte model, which will be available as sort of a competitor to the one laptop per child uh, program. 
it'll be available to governments who want to buy it in bulk, give it to their citizens for $199. But at two gigabytes, you're not going to be able to run everything that's already preloaded on this particular unit. So they're going to have to strip down the OS or strip some of the applications in order to make that work. Uh, but one of, the, one of the nice things about having so much of your memory eaten up already is that there's actually an option to restore to factory default. Uh, when you reboot the computer, if you hit the F9 key, you can uh, restore factory settings uh, without having to install a system restore disk or anything like that. Although Asus does ship a system restore DVD, which requires Windows XP to run. Go figure. Under favorites, you have the chance to basically create a customized screen here. So you can click customize, uh, add your calculator because you use your calculator all the time, and up pops calculator. So you can launch things from here. A couple of uh, final things to note here. The um, screen size being so small, it's nice that you can actually get rid of your taskbar entirely just by clicking a button down here. There's also a number of uh, good keyboard shortcuts for doing things, which is true of most laptops. But for example, if you want to uh, make the screen darker, you just hit function F3. And you can take the brightness down, take the brightness back up. So that's pretty much it. That's the first look at the Asus EEE PC for Download Squad. We're going to come back and give you a couple of more advanced features in a little bit. Uh, just to give you a teaser, take a look at this. That's right, it's a Linux terminal. And you can do all sorts of nifty things with that Linux terminal. For example, launch applications that are installed but not available using the easy mode interface, like the Conqueror desktop slash web browser. Stay tuned.